Sing Ma Sing. Now my grandmother spent her time singing in her room, and a gospel of notes leap out of her mouth. The hairs on the wall stand in ovation. The mirror applauds and she smiles back, but the windows are always closed, and there is no other audience. Decades have passed clocks between its fingers and my grandmother's voice still sits in an unventilated room. Each morning she leaves the room, but without her voice. She only takes it to church. To sing to God she is still here, and with strength only old age can conjure up. One evening she confides in me that her singing voice is suffocating, the result of hiding in her room for years, forgetting that every living thing inside us also has to breathe to survive. I do not know how to console her. My ears are the only thing I have to give a wise woman. She sighs and says to me, Teresa, do not waste your talent, my dear. Gasping for air, my grandmother's voice now crawls out of her mouth during conversations, speaks wistfully about the youthful days when she dreamt of becoming a singer. In her dream, the spotlight seeps through her skin and her body is a flashlight glowing even in the darkest valleys. She sings, and everyone that listens is saved from something that is killing them. This is to say it was not about fame, just her yearn to be light, a yearn evident in every form her voice finds itself. When my grandmother speaks, every worry in me loosens from the chemical bonds that made it acid enough to burn. I mourn the voice never heard, but I imagine an alternate version of this story. In the alternate version, it's the early 1960s, my grandmother's hair is rich black, her knees are still vibrant. One afternoon, my grandmother sees the sun, notices the way it mimics a spotlight and opens the window to feel its heat on her skin. My grandmother has Motown record label aching to touch her garment, a crowd requesting an autograph. Everyone wants to hear her sing, their mouth spreading the good news. But time has passed. I am the age she once was, and I am dodging deja vu with practice. At least I now know that breathing is not just for the body, but for the things inside us that will live beyond us to carry our names. My grandmother never became a singer, but I refuse to call it a regret, because I carry her name. A generation carries her name. And tell me, what greater way is there for your light to be a mark on the body of others?